Okay, thanks. Well, thanks everybody for um, attending our um, forum tonight. Um, I'm Ann LaRoyer, I'm the chair of the Open Space Committee and really wanna thank you for participating in this um, important planning process for the town. Um, joining me tonight are, as you may be able to see on your screen, other members of the Open Space Committee and um, along with Kelly Linema, who's the Assistant Director of Planning and David Morgan, um, the Environmental Planner and a Conservation Agent from the town, as well as um, Krista Morevic and her, some of her other staff members from Horsley Witten Group. That's the consultant group that we're working with to prepare this um, open space and recreation plan update. We especially wanna thank the um, Community Preservation Act Committee um, for awarding us uh, a CPA grant so that we could hire this great firm to help, to help us on this process. Um, there'll be a short introductory presentation about the plan and you'll be hearing about the feedback we've received already uh, from the survey, which I'm sure most of you probably already took. We received over a thousand responses, which was a really great response. So we have lots of good ideas from that and lots of other information that Horsley Witten and the town um, has staff has been collecting about um, the current status of, of uh, life in Arlington, so to speak, to, to put into this plan. Um, you'll also be hearing about some of our key priorities and the community needs that have been expressed already. And then we'll be breaking out into small um, groups for about 45 minutes or so to brainstorm how these issues can be crafted into new goals and objectives to address the needs that have been expressed. Then at the end, uh, we'll come back together to share these ideas um, from each of the different groups. Um, just briefly, the Open Space Committee is um, a volunteer town committee that's responsible for preparing and monitoring the town's open space and recreation plan. Um, we have to follow state guidelines um, in this comprehensive document that describes the uh, community's current open space and recreation resources and outlines an action plan to address the documented needs over the next seven years. Arlington has had a approved open space and recreation plan in place since 1996 when the open space committee was first established. Keeping the plan current through regular updates like this one helps to maintain and enhance um, the environmental, social, and economic benefits for all of Arlington's residents and makes the town eligible for a variety of state grants for implementing new projects. For example, um, Arlington has just been has been awarded over a million dollars from the Land and Water Conservation Fund for numerous projects across town over the past decades. And most recently, um, more than $300,000 toward the Arlington Reservoir Reservation Project, which has been ongoing for, for several years. Um, since the, last, the plan was last updated in 2015, we've accomplished a lot of the goals and objectives that were set out in that plan. So, but now here we are, we're re revisiting those goals and trying to put together a new set of objectives and needs um, for, the, for the next uh, seven years ahead. So Krista Moravik from Horsley Witten is gonna um, provide more information about the background and then later we'll get into the breakout groups. So thanks again for coming. And, um, enjoy the show. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much, Anne. So I'm just going to do a high level overview of the plan itself. Um, and did touch on some of these uh, pieces. Uh, so uh, what first, uh, what is open space? So when we talk about open space and the open space and recreation plan, we're talking about public and private land that is underdeveloped for a variety of reasons. Um, it, that might provide public access to nature, it protects water quality, or it might protect habitat uh, like wetlands or threatened species. I think the recreation piece of the open space and recreation plan is a little more uh, understandable. These are indoor outdoor facilities. So these are our parks, our playgrounds, our ball fields, our basketball courts, all of those things. So why do we have a plan? So Anne touched on some of these, we wanna maintain the benefits of these resources, the, the economic benefits, uh, they bring people into town, uh, they have social benefits, they're places where we gather as a community, and obviously they have environmental benefits, uh, cleaning our air and, cleaning, and having clean water. 
They also guide decisions, uh, uh, policy decisions for open space, natural resources, around, and recreational issues. So it's a policy, the plan is a policy document that's helping the town make these decisions. Um, and then as Ann mentioned, it supports efforts to acquire funding uh, through DCS and other sources. Uh, having an approved plan uh, uh, ensures that the town remains eligible for those DCS funds. So this is an overview of our process and our milestones. So we started uh, looking at data and reports and plans and doing interviews. We updated all those inventories in the plan, looking at local conditions. Um, we held a public forum uh, in June and we talked about community needs. We also did a survey and as mentioned, we had incredible response, over a thousand responses. Uh, so right now we're, we're talking about goals and objectives in this, uh, this evening and that will help us move forward in drafting our plan. We'll distribute that plan for comment uh, and support uh, specifically looking for uh, those uh, letters of support from uh, the select board, the redevelopment board, and the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC. And we then, then submit it to DCS for their review and approval. And we anticipate doing that uh, either uh, late uh, winter, so after the new year or early spring. Uh, so there have been a lot of uh, efforts, planning efforts and other, other effort, uh, uh, studies that have been done around open space and recreational planning. These are also informing the update process. So we, we don't wanna repeat what's already been done. We wanna build on these efforts. So we're taking a lot of this uh, into consideration as we update the open space and recreation plan. Uh, so what is in the plan? So it does have 11 required sections that I will not touch on, but it uh, offers a community snapshot. So demographics, housing uh, information, it has environmental inventories, it talks about needs, so needs for natural resource protection, needs for the community, needs of the town to help manage these resources, uh, has goals and objectives. And then there's a seven year action plan that uh, offers detailed strategies to meet those goals and objectives, who's responsible for them, um, and the time frame uh, that the town expects to get them implemented. So, what have we heard so far? Um, so, around those uh, sections of needs, um, what have we heard? So natural resource protection. Um, so there, uh, there's uh, a need to continue to improve water quality and access to resources um, and add green space. Uh, and specifically around Mill Brook, there's already work being done around that, Spy Pond and the, and the Res, Arlington Reservoir. Uh, there was a lot of input around uh, public trees and protecting public trees and incre increasing the tree canopy uh, in the community, uh, educating the public uh, about trees on private property and their importance. Um, and then also thinking about a tree manage uh, the tree management plan and managing all that information around uh, new trees uh, that are being planted. Um, and wildlife habitat and corridors. So building corridors between uh, these open spaces and parkland and conservation areas. So creating those corridors, not only for wildlife, but also for us to move between them um, and, and, and enhancing them uh, in different ways, if it's through native plantings or other uh, water quality improvements like this one here at Wellington Park. Uh, so community needs. Uh, we heard a lot about walking and biking safety uh, specifically around the Miniman bikeway, uh, safety, uh, using the bike path, uh, the bikeway, access to it, so uh, identifying some limited uh, access points, but also connections to that bikeway uh, from neighboring uh, community or neighbor, neighboring uh, residences and the safety of those connections. Um, and also when we think about walking and biking connections also between resources. Uh, there was also some uh, needs expressed around new resources and amenities, uh, new opportunities, so more space for unprogrammed uh, or unstructured events act or activities. Um, there was a lot of input around an indoor or outdoor pool, um, new wayfinding signs uh, that kind of link all of the town resources together. Um, There's also a lot of discussion about new uh, popularity around new activities like pickleball. Uh, so we heard a lot about new opportunities that the community is looking for. Um, and then finally, uh, environmental justice and equity. So thinking about who has access to resources, 
Um, do, do all neighborhoods have access? Uh, thinking about ADA accessibility and um, how to improve that, um, and then prioritizing areas that, that need uh, additional resources. Um, and finally, management needs. Um, so improvements, upgrades, and maintenance of existing resources. So having the need for a long-term management plan of those resources, um, either the, the town properties uh, and, and all their lands. Um, thinking about regularly scheduled maintenance for recreational areas, um, also uh, in management of conservation areas, whether it's invasive species management or those types of, of needs. Um, and uh, uh, sort of the connections that departments make in their roles in those, in those uh, uh, capacity to build, uh, to, to do that maintenance and that improvement. Uh, balancing development and redevelopment with protecting and enhancing natural resources. So integrating useful open spaces and new development projects uh, and, and thinking about infill uh, and those uh, new efforts and how to uh, enhance them with uh, more green space, connecting to nearby amenities uh, and building those connections. Uh, and finally, climate change and natural hazards. So you know, that, that there's two pieces to that. So adapting to changes that are already happening related to climate or anticipated, and then being proactive uh, and, and uh, reducing, for example, the, the, the town's footprint and, and uh, the reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So different ways that the town can have policies to, to do that. The town has a net zero plan. So building on that um, and how do we incorporate that into the open space and recreation plan. Okay, so tonight's discussion. So as uh, Anne mentioned, we're interested, uh, so we're focusing on uh, the open space and recreation plan goals. So we're gonna look at the goals from the 2015 plan um, and think about, are they still relevant? Uh, are they still meeting the needs that we've heard from the community? Uh, what needs to change? Are there things missing? Um, so I'm gonna uh, touch on each of one of those. Uh, and we've sort of, we're not interested in wordsmithing tonight. We're really interested in ideas and themes that we should be focusing on. So I wanted to, so we'll start with goal one. So goal one is focused around conservation and preservation. So this is how it reads. So acqu acquire ecologically value undeveloped lands or ensure their protection through conservation restrictions and other means. So here the theme is conservation and preservation of undeveloped lands. Um, so we would be interested in thinking about, uh, is this goal still relevant? Is this theme still relevant? And what are some ways in which uh, the town can uh, uh, make action on that? So thinking about directing statements, policies, objectives that the town should be thinking about under that goal. The second goal is around maintenance and enhancement. So this is uh, for both open space resources like watersheds, water bodies, natural areas, but also parks, playgrounds, and outdoor recreational areas, historic and cultural landscapes as well. So thinking about the maintenance and enhancement of existing resources uh, in, the, in Arlington. Goal three focuses on uh, local and regional coordination and communication. So this is talking about uh, coordination and communication between town departments, between different commissions and volunteer groups, but also uh, on a regional level with neighboring towns and other regional entities, uh, state agencies, federal agencies that help with natural resource and uh, open space recreational planning issues. Uh, goal number four is public awareness and access. So increasing uh, the public's knowledge of uh, the resources in town, increasing accessibility to those resources, promoting stewardship of those resources. And finally, sustainability and resilience. So this is around, uh, the cli around addressing climate change, meeting climate change challenges and natural resource management associated with those issues. So what I wanna do is just do a quick temperature check um, with just those goal, with those um, five goals, we're in just as your quick reaction, are they still relevant? Are they, they're relevant, but they do need to be updated or you feel like um, this goal or this theme around this goal is no longer relevant and it really should be removed. So I'm gonna pop up a poll 
and each goal is listed and you can answer that, uh, those three choices for each goal. So the first goal, conservation, preservation, is this goal still relevant? Yes, yes, but needs to be updated. No, no longer relevant and should be removed. Goal two on maintenance and enhancement. Goal three, there we go. Goal three on uh, local and regional coordination and communication. Goal four on public awareness and access. And then finally goal five on sustainability and resiliency. So we're just doing a quick temperature check. So feel free to partake in our poll. Uh, oh. Can you explain how to do it? Because I'm clicking on the yes, but it's So not. I think our open space members who are co-hosts, oh. I don't think you will be able uh, okay. to take the quiz or the poll, I'm sorry. So we're asked. All right, and I can actually. Um... No, never mind. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. That's OK. okay. All, all, the, all our resident guests, please do it. <laughs> Anyone who's able, please click an answer. So we're just trying to get an idea before we go into our rooms. I see some updates. People need to be updated. So I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Actually. I'm going to end the poll and now I'm going to share the results. So folks can see the results. So it looks like most folks feel the goals are still relevant, relevant but need to be updated. There is maybe we'll need to revisit goal four if that is still relevant and should be removed. We did have a response to that. So that I appreciate you taking that. It helps us when we go before we go into our rooms um, to help us sort of decide where, where we, we might be focusing our efforts. So in our rooms, as I mentioned, so we're gonna, each room will uh, have uh, a facilitator um, and it will walk you through each of the five goals and really the themes, like, like I said, we're not, we're not trying to wordsmith, we will do that. The open space committee is definitely gonna do that, but we're really focusing on the goal as a theme and what are the key issues that it meets and what are the key issues that it might not meet, but what are those key issues and how will it address those? And then we wanna know what are some principles or direction that uh, statements or other sorts of uh, uh, suggestions to help guide the town as it makes decisions to meet that goal. So is there sort of an overarching policy or direction that it should be taken? And then thinking about uh, environmental justice and equity and how can we use that goal and that, and the, and, and that theme of that goal to, to meet uh, those, sort, those objectives around uh, environmental justice and equity. Uh, you know, we all like to think about actions. So taking an opportunity to think about what might some of those priority actions would be under this goal. And we think about priority actions, you know, this is a seven year plan. So priorities were one that we probably would think we would want to address in the first, you know, three years um, once this plan gets underway. Um, so giving an opportunity to think about that a little bit. And then finally, after you've gone through all those goals, you know, what is there anything that's missing? You know, what else should we be thinking about? Is there another goal or another theme that's not being addressed in those five that the committee should be thinking about? A few ground rules. Um, obviously, we want to be kind and respectful of each other. You know, we want to be concise. We want to be respectful of people's time. Um, so we're going to spend about 45 minutes in the room. Um, so try to um, be... Uh, Focused in your in your um, in your answers, there is an email and uh, that we'll present at the end. So if you have further ideas, you can always reach back out to us. Uh, we want to be open to new ideas. We want to be patient with technology as always, um, and we want to have fun. So here's an opportunity to talk with your neighbors and your your friends about these issues. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So we can see each other. Um, so I think, 
how many groups are okay. you? I, so I have the breakout groups all set. I have three groups of about eight or nine people. Um, Great. And so everyone, I will be issuing invitations to those breakout groups. Please hit accept. It, although if you don't or you miss it, um, I'll be able to put you in a breakout group as soon as we all break up. And then I will have everyone reconvene in about 45 minutes and I'll send out a warning about a minute in advance of that so everybody knows that it's coming. All right, so if we're Thank ready, you. I'm gonna open these rooms and here we go. There, um, you should be seeing a invitation on your screen. You just have to hit, you have to accept. I don't see any, an invitation. Okay. Um, uh, I can join a breakup room if you, <laughs> if you wish. Oh, here, hang on, I'm going to, here, I'll try to send you um, to a group. Did something pop up just now? No. I can, I, uh, I said that you have been assigned to breakout room three. Okay. Yep. So I'll go there. Hit accept there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Ed, are you having a problem joining a breakout group or just not feeling it tonight? Hey, Kelly, it's Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I have to leave for the tree committee meeting at seven thirty, unfortunately. So just, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Um, you too. <laughs> how are you doing? Did you want to join a group for five minutes, or you just want to? Um... Um, well, you know, I'm actually like hysterically looking for the tree committee agenda. So, which you know, and it starts in five minutes. So I would, oh. love to, but okay. I, I'm well, for the... we don't take it personally. I'm sure we'll have an we'll have an opportunity for you to provide feedback on I the goal. I just want to say something very quickly to you about yeah. that email you sent today. Oh no, I think I actually responded. We're talking about bylaw changes. Sure. And it made us feel so good that you quoted, you sent us the quote of the consultant um, on the housing plan. Yeah. It said that we, you know, it, it would be, yeah, that there was a value in encouraging um, builders to um, save trees. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But you know what? which is the whole point of the bylaw, of course, but we never presented it that way. Yeah. Not like, it, right now it is kind of punitive, like you can't take this down. If you take this down, you're gonna have to pay all this money rather than let's figure out a way to preserve the trees rather than let's figure out a way to punish you for taking down the trees. So yeah, I know the goal is to keep the older trees up. <laughs> no, and, that is the best, and, but yeah. it's, so much, much more of a positive. Oh, sure. I, I mean, I, I think it's fire. often that, um, you know, people see development and especially development of affordable housing is somehow against environmental goals. And I, I just think there, I think um, there are so many ways about thinking them in, in companionship with each other. And in particular, when you're thinking about households who need affordable housing, um, having access to those environmental resources and, and you know, the benefits of a, of a large tree canopy, that's, that's even more important. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but anyway, I wanted to tell you that you may. Well, I'm so, I'm glad, I'm glad. And I know it's probably a little weird to just see that, and you're probably not the place you were expecting to see um, a recommendation about the tree bylaw pop up, but I'm glad you brought it to my attention and I'm glad yeah. our consultants were so quick to respond, so. Yeah, and, and tell the consultant that, you, that, he, that he or she, I don't know which it is, really made yeah. our day. Okay, great, I will. Well, good luck finding your agenda and uh, All right, thank look at the meeting you. tonight. All okay. right, thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, oh, thanks. Let's turn my lights on. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Uh, thanks for uh, saying hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Nice to see you, too. I hope the breakout group was good. Yes, and I dread them, but they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. In a lot of meetings, you mention breakout groups, and suddenly, like, five people leave. <laughs> so... <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're just pulling everyone in from the breakout groups. I 
hope everyone had a fruitful discussion. Okay, I think we have everyone back. So Krista, I'm gonna hand this over to Hello. you. Hello. <laughs> Looks like everyone, oh, there we are. Hi everyone. So um, what I thought we could do is have um, our facilitators sort of give us a little bit of feedback on uh, some of the goals uh, that they had. Um, and I can maybe assign a goal to a particular facilitator and they can just give us some feedback on, on that goal. Um, so we had five. So I'll start with our first goal, which was on conservation and, um, and preservation. And could I start with you, Jeff? And maybe if there was some, you know, maybe a, a guiding direction that came out of your group uh, related to conservation and preservation or some priority strategies that might have been brought up. So I think the group was, you know, first of all, questioning how many opportunities there are for new conservation land in the town. Uh, a lot of the most obvious places are already accounted for. Um, so there was discussion of, of course, the mover property, uh, but also we're brainstorming uh, some of those smaller areas that might uh, have some have some good value. So areas along Mill Brook uh, that might be conserved uh, not only for recreation but to help with uh, water quality and, and so forth. Um, we're talking about Hooks Hollow, uh, talking about some areas around uh, uh, Spy Pond. Uh, that might be appropriate for conservation. Um, also wondering uh, to what extent uh, we can encourage private property owners who have uh, large expanses of open space or larger uh, expanse of open space uh, to um, accept conservation easements for their properties. Great, thank you. Kelly, how about goal two, maintenance and enhancement? maybe uh, some guidance or some priorities that may have come out of that goal to help support it. Sure, we definitely had a few priority actions that we had some interest in. Uh, obviously we acknowledge that maintenance and enhancement is um, reliant on costs and funding, which can sometimes be a challenge. Um, one of the things that we were interested in is thinking about signage and educational signage. So again, tying into kind of more the public awareness aspect of that um, and how can you enhance park space to also serve that educational um, benefit. Um, there is also some interest in um, bathroom facilities and thinking how can we make our bathroom facilities not just nicer, but also a little greener, thinking about composting facilities. Um, yeah. Uh, and then just making sure that facilities like trash cans and, and whatnot are available and accessible and actually usable for, for individuals visiting uh, town facilities. Great, thanks. So I'll take goal three, which was uh, local and regional coordination and communication. And um, so we talked a little bit about uh, the coordination between the different departments and their different roles and uh, maintaining and the upkeep of the you know, recreational spaces and the open, uh, open space areas um, and just ha having that communication and, and uh, enhance and you know, making sure that everyone understands their role and, and how that happens. Um, we did have a uh, touch on schools, so we didn't, you know, and they also have uh, facilities uh, that are related to recreation like playgrounds and ball fields and sort of have a better understanding and how that coordinates is and, and usage of those with outside of school time. Um, and there were some, um, we had some discussion about communication between the different committees and, you know, if there, there's a lot of areas of interest, uh, you know, a lot of uh, objectives cross over the different committees. So finding ways to make communication between them to bring folks aware of a meeting like this. Um, so we had someone uh, from the Disability Commission. So obviously an issue that's important to them, also important uh, to different uh, the Open Space Committee who's hosting tonight. So making sure there's that cross connection between those two. Uh, so I have goals four and five, which I'm gonna circle back to Jeff. And if he wanted to touch base on public awareness and access, and, you know, I will say we did realize, you know, a lot of our, these goals, there's 
elements that overlap. And it's hard to put things in a single bucket. And we do recognize that. So um, so some, some things that we talked about in one goal may have been talked about in another. So, um, and I'm just thinking of that of the public awareness and access may have been one of those, but I'll throw it back to you, Jeff. Absolutely. Um, so we did, we also had um, someone representing uh, uh, accessibility in our group. Uh, so we did discuss uh, improving ADA accessibility, making sure that uh, roadways, sidewalks, ramps, uh, other facilities are uh, accessible for all. Um, talked about this also uh, specifically in regards to community gardens, uh, make sure the elderly, uh, you know, the community gardens are, you know, sometimes the elderly can't bend over to plant something. So you know, we have raised beds or, or whatnot to um, uh, keep the elderly involved in, in gardening. Um, Definitely talked about partnering with the school system and uh, I, working uh, environmental awareness um, and, and stewardship of the land into the, the school curriculum. Uh, someone noted that uh, there is a sustainability coordinator at the Arlington Public Schools, who's a great resource for making those connections. Um, also just wondering ways, you know, like not everyone has the capacity to join a friends of group. We had a lot of conversation about uh, the friends of groups, the various groups in, in the town. Uh, and, you know, there are people who are gonna wanna get very involved in that. And there are some people who just, you know, wanna do their part, but don't have time to be part of a committee. So how can we better communicate to the public? Here are some simple things that you can do uh, in your homes and your day-to-day -day life to um, uh, improve sustainability. Um, talked about maybe getting neighborhood block leaders uh, to serve as those points of communication within neighborhoods because people are more likely to listen to their neighbors uh, than, you know, having to look up information actively um, from, from the town website or what have you. Uh, also talked a lot about signage, like there are ways that uh, at conservation properties, at parklands, use signage to educate the public about the uh, different um, strategies uh, 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 in, in terms of plantings or native species uh, or, or you know, reducing invasive species uh, or not dumping into the sewer system, just that whole range of using signs to uh, improve public awareness about um, maintaining our public properties and maintaining the environment in general. And then uh, finally talked about um, being aware of uh, accessibility in terms of language uh, or, or for the hearing impaired uh, or the visually impaired uh, and making sure that all that communication is available in different languages and, and um, other sources. Thank you, Jeff. And Kelly, if you don't mind, I'm going to throw goal five at you and see what your group talked about around sustainability and resilience. Yeah, sustainability and resilience. Uh, we talked a lot about stormwater management. Um, so we had a couple of individuals mention that there's a lot of asphalt. Um, and so thinking, how can we better improve coordination within the town? Uh, if we have some sort of road repaving project, is that an opportunity for us to install green stormwater infrastructure and thinking about how to better coordinate um, that kind of timetable of not just improving the roads pavement wise, but improving them so that there is better stormwater management. Um, we also mentioned that uh, this might be a chance to kind of look at town ordinances and see whether the current stormwater management uh, ordinance is proactive enough and uh, uh, doing a good job at mitigating flooding in the area and, and improving water quality. Um, and then last but not least, tying back into this public education piece, we talked about, you know, is this an opportunity to inventory where we're using green stormwater infrastructure throughout the town, making some sort of map and visual for, for individuals to use to explore GSI facilities in the town and, and learn more about that uh, potential model. Thank you. Um, so we, one of our last asks was any, anything that we missed or new goals. And I will be honest, our group didn't get to that. And I didn't know if Jeff or Kelly, if you had any new ideas that came out of your group or if you had a chance to get to that piece. No, we were talking about goal five right up until the last few seconds. <laughs> 
We did talk about it for a few minutes and echoing, I think, Jeff's group. Uh, we really focused in again on the value of signage and using signage to raise public awareness and, you know, enhance existing facilities. Yeah, great. Thank you. Great. So that I all valuable information and we you know, that's really, we're really appreciative of your time uh, this evening. And um, so our, our charge now is to take um, your direction or your ideas and sort of revisit these goals and, and update them um, where they need to be updated to, to um, sort of meet the challenges of the needs that we heard. Um, so with that, um, I don't know if Anne, if you had any uh, closing remarks, I can uh, share uh, the email. Uh, if folks, you know, after you leave tonight, you might have an aha moment and you want to reach back out to us. Um, we do have a, uh, a website, too many screens. <laughs> And as you share that, I do want to know, so um, I know everyone here may have seen the announcement that David Morgan is our new environmental planner yes. and conservation agent. So this is, um, he is managing this project now and he is here tonight and we have, uh, we've asked him to provide the closing, closing statement, but also just a big round of welcome to David. Um, we're very excited to have you with us. And so thank you so much for joining the DPCD team. And uh, we look forward to working with you on this and other initiatives. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, and if you if you wanted to give your closing remarks first, I'd be happy to follow up on. Oh, what you just have just briefly. I didn't. I I just realized I was unmuted before when I started. <laughs> but mostly, I just want to thank everybody for for coming here, and we really um, value your input at this uh, phase. Um, so um, you know that we, we have a, a way to, for you to continue to communicate with us through this um, OSRP update email or contacting any of us individually. And um, if you have uh, friends and other uh, people that you know around town and your neighbors, please, you know, after this event, um, share what you've learned and, you know, be sure that they uh, feel like they can access um, our website and uh, email address to, to continue to this process. And um, we will be drafting up the document, uh, the plan itself as uh, Krista mentioned, and we'll be sharing um, at least parts of it with the community in the future. So I uh, hope to continue to get your input on that. So thanks again. All right, go David, welcome. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, as I described, and others. It's been wonderful to hear from you tonight. Uh, we heard some very important and insightful feedback. Uh, so on behalf of the Department Planning and Community Development, just want to thank you for your time and efforts. Uh, you're all very committed folks and appreciate your involvement. Uh, uh, and mentioned that we're going to be compiling things. Uh, we'll be circulating that with the Open Space Committee as well as other municipal departments. It'll become part of the record and uh, ultimately shape the plan as it uh, is developed this spring. And you know, I heard a number of important things tonight. I wanted to raise up a few themes that I caught over uh, the breakout groups. One was engaging private land landholders uh, to support town initiatives, uh, especially around best management practices for, for stormwater, um, but also other concerns and uh, also how to encourage owners of larger lots to you know, deed part of their land to the town uh, or perhaps a third party as a conservation restriction. Um, there's a lot of arm around signage. Uh, we heard about providing cues for, um, you know, indicating the, the use of open space, its management, the history, the potential of the space. Um, we also heard a couple of places where the, the town should improve, thinking about communications from the town to the citizens and also amongst uh, committees. 
within uh, sort of the, the town circles. And certainly on uh, ADA accessibility, that came up a number of times. Uh, the facilities ought to improve uh, from the bikeway to gardens, parks, and so forth. So uh, the final steps, of course, will be delivering uh, an action plan. Uh, we're working on this seven year timeline and uh, we'll be starting to circulate some of these new objectives as they've been discussed tonight and, and reshaped uh, in the early spring of the coming year. So thank you again for all of your participation. I hope you'll continue giving feedback. I'll, I know this is the, the last public meeting, but we do certainly welcome all of your input and uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, have, a, have a great rest of your evening and thanks again for your participation. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And everyone. Thanks, Krista. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.